Good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gross Hill Township Hall. Uh, I'd like to call the uh, February 12th business meeting to order at 732. And we're going to begin with a flag presentation by... I have to have my glasses on. Oh, no, thank you. Act 1261. Thank you. Mr. Th thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Yes, uh, we have PAC 1261 Wolfden. Uh, these are second graders. Uh, led by Jenny Budziak, uh, and I would uh, I would like to read their names. And guys, if you could just indicate when I say your name, just wait. Okay. Uh, J Johnny Adamsack. I'm sorry, and and please correct me if I say these names wrong. Thank you, Johnny. Noah Booker. Trevor Botten, is that, I can't read Jenny's uh, writing, is that right? <laughs> okay, Andrew Budziak, Reed Ferguson, Finley Morrison, Gabe Murray, Hunter Rose, Zane Tanova, is that right? Did I say your name right? Thank you, Zane. Grayson Wolf. Not here. Okay, Jack Young. Thank you, guys. And they are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. What brings go 12, uh, Pack 1261 to, uh, to the to the meeting tonight? Do you want to see how the township is run? Do you want to? Actually, just needed to practice doing. Uh, oh, that was just the practice. We have to do it again. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. It was great to see everyone. Now get home and get your homework done. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know, I know. <laughs> okay, well, back to business. We have uh, Thanos is uh, not going to be with his excuse tonight. Honor said she was questionable. That flu is still going around. So, but we do have a quorum. We'll conduct the business as uh, presented. At this time, I'll. My microphone is not working. So, can you uh, tell Mike? To I have a total of one button I can control. I know, none of them are on. I don't think. Okay. Okay. Have to have to put, or you can always move up a little bit closer. Okay, that uh, that dog didn't hunt. Um, <laughs> all right, so at th this time we'll, uh, uh, um, yeah, consider uh, additions or de deletions to tonight's agenda, and there are several. And I will begin. I will move that. Uh, let's see. We're going to request to delete action item number three, the marketing agreement. It just hasn't been approved by the report. Yeah. Discussion. Those in favor of removing, uh, action, de yeah, delaying action item number three, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that will be uh, removed. Um, and to add, yeah, the minutes to the uh, consent agenda, the January 8th closed session after our board meeting, like add that support. Okay. Those in favor of uh, adding the, the minutes for the closed session, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. I'd also like to add at the end of tonight's meeting a closed session to discuss um, uh, lease agreements and a lawsuit. Support. A uh, uh, discussion among the board? Questions? 
Those in favor of adding the closed session, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None of our attorney is present. And uh, Mr. Budney? Yes, I, I'd like to uh, actually uh, motion to take action items one and two and move them into the consent agenda. Support. Okay, we have a motion and support for to move the appointments to the consent and, agenda. And just because they're, you know, they're they're relatively repetitive things that we do, they're just. Either we're here tonight. Yep. I'd like to introduce them, but they're not. What's well, uh, just be a consent agenda. Other discussion items. Those in favor of moving uh, action items one and two to tonight's consent agenda, by by saying aye. 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 Opposed. None offered. Uh, any other additions, deletions to tonight's agenda? <laughs> Not offered. Uh, those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, None offered. The ad agenda stands as amended. With that, I will ask for public comment on tonight's agenda items. Mr. Clark. But since we move, you can you can comment. On yeah, well, that's the one I'm going to report on. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, you got one, uh, Woody Clark Park Lane. Uh, the one you moved, number two, appointed to Airport Commerce Park Commission. Who is that? Uh, Daryl Filarski. Daryl Filarski is the name of the gentleman. Son or the father? Son. Okay. Thank, you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Other comments on tonight's agenda items? Unoffered. Um, with that, we'll move on to a public hearing. This time, let's make it uh, 739. I'd like to call a public hearing to order. This is the second of two public hearings regarding a community development block grant for the year 2017 through 2018. The grants under scrutiny will be, okay, the location, they're all township wide. And uh, the first one, the activity will be for senior programs. We're requesting an amount of $25,000. These funds will be used for senior programs, staff, and delivery driver for the senior homebound nutrition program. The second item, again, island-wide, is our uh, continued membership in the Senior Alliance for $1,750. Senior Alliance is a nonprofit uh, area on aging and air, yeah, the area is 1C, which is our local area. Provide services to seniors such as providing meals, in-home nursing care, emergency prescriptions, various support services to Wayne County seniors in 34 communities. Uh, we're, of course, worried about the service and support provided during those township. Uh, additionally, we have another township-wide um, um, ADA playground structure and equipment, universally accessible. Yeah, ADA improvements, and, and that is a request of $12,766.30 for ADA playground improvements. And another township-wide, uh, prepare documents for block grants and general office tasks, and that was $4,390.70. Those are our requests for the block grants. Um, the, the time frame was somewhat compressed due to a number of changes, a change in our requirements to get the block grant out. The Ohio had different rules. Uh, Mr. Carroll at Wayne County is accelerated the program a little bit. We kind of got caught in a bit of a squeeze, but this is the second public hearing, and uh, they're required to get that information out to you so we know where your t you know and we know where your tax dollars are going through this grant. Program. Are there any uh, public comments on? this uh, second public hearing on the uh, Community Development Block Grant Program for fiscal years 2017 through 18. With none, I've, it's, it's convoluted, but again, this is what we have to do. With none offered, I will uh, consider the hearing uh, publicly completed and uh, we'll adjourn the public hearing. Before we do that, can I, I just that. wanted to make a comment to, to maybe further uh, explain that the ADA playground equipment, that'll be, uh, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but that will be located at Water's Edge. It'll be a playground set up at Water's Edge. Uh, and and the administrative is a fee that we can get for putting this grant together. That is, is yeah, yeah. So that's what that is, just for a little better understanding of what what we're going for. Yeah. The plan is for the playground at Water's Edge, although. 
someplace else. We, but that's the idea. Yep. Yes. Well, this would be this would be the new one. Yeah. Focusing on on universal access. Other comments. Again, with uh, with none offered, with the uh, it, the yeah, the public hearing stands completed. Then second okay. support. Okay, moved. Supported by. I'll, I'll move. We we close here. I'll support trust, it. Supported by Trustee Budney. Those in favor of re closing the public hearing, returning to the business meeting. Please say the Aye. 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 Opposed. No, we don't do these very often, <laughs> so I, I need a little help from uh, the deputy <coughs> clerk here. All right, so we're back to our business meeting. And with that, I'll turn the consent agenda over to Rodney. Okay, uh, motion to approve consent agenda 17-076, which includes the minutes of the regular meeting of January 8th, 2018, the minutes of the closed meeting, uh, and accounts payable check register uh, dated through February 12th, 2018. Okay, moved by Trustee Buddy, seconded by uh, Trustee Bletcher. Any further discussion? Because we did get those late check registers. Uh, any discussion among the board on tonight's consent agenda? And our and our two appointees. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I I moved and put them out there, and I forgot to mention it. It also the consent agenda also includes appointment of uh, Carol Canope uh, uh, to serve on the board of review through. 2000, uh, January 2019, and the appointment of Daryl Filarski to the Airport Commerce Park Commission. Second. Okay. Well, with, uh, thank you. All right. With that, discussion among the board. Other than I'm, I, I'm looking yeah. forward to welcoming yeah. Carol back to, to board review. She served as, in my stead as secretary to the board. Together, we're gonna. It's just gonna run. Comments on uh, tonight's consent agenda? If none offered, those in favor of approving the consent agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. That stands approved, which will march us right down to. I read the, uh, having read the motion then, uh, I move that uh, we approve the application for the 2017 2018 Community Development Block Grant Program. Support. Okay, moved by the supervisor, tr seconded by Trustee Budney. Uh, we've discussed it a little bit that nothing has changed. So, basic motion is based on the recommendation of the recreation director, the Gross Hill Township Board authorizes the recreation department to seek grant funding from Wayne County Community Development Division for the following 2000 fiscal 2017 18 CDBG projects. The uh, Township-wide senior programs, $25,000. Township-wide senior alliance, $1,750. ADA improvements, ADA playground, $12,766.30. And administration fees, uh, $4,390.70 for a total of $43,907. Previously discussed. Questions, comments among the board? Okay, with none offered, those in favor of... Yes, ma'am. Roll call vote. More and more challenges. Okay, well, with that, those in favor of approving the uh, four red community development block grant application as recommended by Community Recreation Commission will signify by, I will supervise, will begin with an aye. Uh, Trusty Budney. Aye. Trusty Nelson. Aye. Trusty Malvesto. Aye. And Trustee Bletcher. Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. What and all. And that. That. Mr. Clark, <laughs> behave, please, please. All right. That concludes tonight's agenda. Loud. Okay. okay, the clerk's report. Reminder that if you're traveling outside of the United States for spring break, time is running out for applying for a passport without having to pay an extra fee of $60 to expedite your application. 
normal turnaround time for routine passport service is now six weeks. The clerk's office is scheduling appointments to process passport applications for anyone who is applying for their first passport or anyone who has an expiring passport that was issued before they were 17 years of age. Schedule an appointment weekdays between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Call the clerk's office at Township Hall, extension 241 Adult renewal passports that have been expired less than five years may be completed and mailed to the, by the applicant directly to the U.S. Department of State. Passport photos are available at most major drugstores and at Meyer Photo Department. Forms of for forms for either type of passport are available through the link on Township website by visiting www.travel.state.gov or you may obtain forms in the literature rack outside the clerk's office at Township Hall. Secondly, those residents interested in running for precinct delegate positions on the August 7, 2018 primary election ballot michigan.gov forward slash SOS or you may or they may be obtained at the township website or at the office. Candidates for county convention delegate, precinct delegate, file an affidavit of identity for the primary by 4 p.m. on May 8, 2018. Filing submitted to the clerk of the county in which candidate resides. All deadline elapses at 4 p.m. Thank you, Madam Deputy Clerk. That uh, treasurer's report. Uh, and substitute treasurer, Mr. Bundy. Uh, investments. Uh, we have $24,142,550. Uh, the only other thing from the treasurer would be uh, the uh, Groziel winter property taxes are due Wednesday, February 14th. That's this Wednesday. On February 15th, the 3% penalty is added to any unpaid winter taxes and can still be paid to Groziel Township until March 1st. After that date, all unpaid taxes, summer and winter, become delinquent and then must be paid uh, to Wayne County with further penalty and down at Wayne County. So uh, if nothing else, I'm not sure which is worse, going down there or paying the penalty, but uh, uh, get, them, get them in by, uh, by Wednesday the 14th. That's the treasurer's report. Uh, I, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just do mine. Uh, um, no ZBA uh, meeting this, this month. And uh, tomorrow is our DPS meeting. Uh, although basically we're going to be going over our put, uh, potential budget for the next year, um, I encourage people to come and give us any input they would have regarding roads. Really want to hear about, not that they're bad, we all know they're bad. What we're interested in is what are you, what, what are you, uh, what would you be comfortable with as far as, as, as far as paying and, and uh, what, what roads do you see as being the most important to do? That's my report. Thank you. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock in this, in this room. Mr. Budney, we'll move on. Uh, Mr. Bletcher. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I have the pleasure of sitting on two commissions. One is the open space greenways. We have developed and offered to the township the budget for 2018-19. It is completed. Continue to remain in discussion regarding the purchase of two pieces of property that is being handled through the township manager's job and office, and he's doing great work. Well, I want to thank you for staying on top of it. Second uh, commission I sit on is the Grozio Police Commission. Our chief also is preparing a budget for 2018-19. Anticipates that that will be presented to the commission tomorrow. It has a minimum increase for the coming fiscal year, and Chief Porcerelli has managed to date to stay 100% within his budget. He is right on the money. Chief, thank you for a great job you're doing with that. And the final thing I want to note is uh, 
I, um, I live on Fury Road, and that is one of the roads that is plowed um, typically under the township's plan. I had the great experience uh, during this recent storm that we had of seeing not only uh, Mr. Campo's crew, but also some of our DPW, DPS people out there, John Kime in particular. Um, they did a great job. I went into some of the subdivisions there where we have people that... Uh, I know that need access with help with their driveways. I got stuck several times going down uh, Thorn Tree Court, turned around, and there was Compo with his. Your response, Brian, you take a lot of heat on a lot of things. Um, the response that I've had from neighbors and people How did you manage to move 10 inches? I'm sure it's not perfect. I'm sure there are people about there. I will tell you that the side streets that I saw that I tried to do some work on were absolutely incredibly cleared in a fairly short time. Brian, you and Duncan worked together with that. I think that uh, the township really was served well by our officials. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you both. Um, Mr. Nelson. I am the liaison to the Recreation Department, and of course the ski hill is uh, obviously up and running. Uh, there were 42 people, I was told, out there on Saturday. One of them was uh, Police Officer uh, Mr. Vasquez with five or six little ones, and they had a blast. issue they had was the cars got stuck getting to wherever they park. Now it's not obviously probably marked off where to park. Uh, in any event, uh, I uh, got a hold of uh, John Kime and he went over there and made a couple of swipes and it was done. So, uh, you know, we haven't had that much snow the last few winters, so we had, haven't had to worry about that, but this year we did and he got on it and uh, I'm at snows, so now we're going to have to make a swipe because it's going to fill that. Uh, Chad is going to give uh, the Island Fest report and he's going to give Kim uh, the rec director's report because Kim is in Quebec City with her daughter in a major hockey tournament. Oh, you're Chad. I just spoke to Ms. O'Farrell about an hour ago and she sends her I hate to say it, just, they're not doing real good up there, but we cheer them on. Okay, I was told to click on this. Here we go. So first of all, we want to let you know that uh, Saturday the 24th is the first annual Island Winter Fest, and we are planning, uh, there's going to be skating at the rink, um, bonfire, recreational fire, I should say. Uh, uh, snow sports, snowman contest, uh, there's free hot chocolate, there's going to be sweet treats for purchase. Hopefully you'll go and support Smokies on the water afterwards. It's from 4 to 7, that's Saturday the 24th. We want to remind everybody that uh, Friday the 23rd is the Mother-Son Bowling. It's at Woodhaven Lanes, it starts at 6.30 and you can purchase or sign up to the Recreation Department. Can you guys come in from uh, that sound room and tell me how to sh turn this on for this page, this website? Just to see that work perfect. Okay, so we also want to we also want to thank uh, everyone who came out to the daddy daughter dance. It was a huge success. It was, on the Explore. Oh. It was um, one of uh, it's one of the rec's biggest things is the daddy daughter dance. We need to find a bigger facility because it always sells out and it's just. Dogs are not allowed. So anyways, this is the Island Fest 2018 um, <coughs> new website. And we'd like to show you how easy it is. It's grozealislandfest.com. Or if you Google Island Fest 2018, it will pull it up. This is the home page. And it, you know, there's information there. All the little tabs at the top. Click on schedule. Okay. So <laughs> 
If you go on the schedule and schedule everything Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we got a lot of new stuff coming. We have a foam party on Friday night uh, from 7 to 11. It's going to be in the north parking lot where they have a separate DJ and stage and they load you with foam Saturday night. The fireworks have been moved to Saturday night because it seems like it's a better fix to get everybody there on Saturday opposed to rushing around on Friday. Also, there's a new uh, glow and paint party from 8 to midnight, which will be where the foam party is up there. And we've got some great headlining. Um, like on the application, you can print out the exhibitor, the parade, the sponsor, or the volunteers. Print it out, mail it, or you can drop it off at the rec department. And then if you are a sponsor, we will take your logo Thank you, Logo, for your business, and we'll add it to all our social media channels. On about, it gives a little history about how it started in 1984 and proceeded today. Click on the one that says Chad's Chatterbox, and that is my blog for the township that Ms. O'Farrell does look at it. Make sure everything's good on there. Fast. And if you go on and click uh, 2018 Island Fest, it will take you to all this stuff. Oh, chili cook-off, too, on the 24th for Winterfest. Dry they got coming this year. So it's going to be a lot, lot of fun things. So once again, Island Fest 2018 will take you right there. Uh, $600 for six months for this website, for this guy. That was a pretty good deal. Last three years for us, so... Um, I think pretty much that's it. Uh, um, Island Fest, Mother Son Bowling, and don't forget Winter Fest. Everybody, please come out and support us. Off every year. It's at Water's Edge. That's Saturday the 24th. Thank you. Ed, you mentioned that uh, you like the seat where the supervisor sits. You've got three years to try for that. Well, How do I get back to your home page? <laughs> Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. That, uh, anything else, Jim? Okay. All right, we'll go we'll move on to Mr. Malvesto. Well, first off, I'd like to talk about the BPAC Commission. Uh, our last meeting was actually a study session. Really don't have anything to offer, but on the board meeting of the 26th, they are going to do a, uh, they're looking forward to coming into a study session to bring before the board uh, plans that they have moving forward. And our next meeting, uh, BPAC meeting, will be this, this Thursday at 7.30. Second off, second of all, I'd like to speak about the fire department. Second here to get to the uh, my notes. Apologize for that. We always uh, we always try to make it public uh, how many calls that the uh, the fire department makes on a given month. I know we uh, we spoke uh, last time around about last year's calls, but I want to give you a comparison. For the year 2017, there were 494 rescues. There were 125 fire calls for a total of 619 calls for the year of 2017. That comes out to approximately 1.7 calls per day. To date, this year, 2018, there's been 88 rescues and 10 fire calls. That's a total of 98 calls in the first two months of the year. That aver that's averaging out to 2.25 calls per day. And if you don't think that's important, you look at the number of times that our volunteers are called out in the middle of the night multiple times to provide EMS service for residents in need, as well as fire calls. These these are a bunch of hardworking, this is a hardworking group of guys, very dedicated to what they do. And nobody appreciates the amount of time that they put in over and above making calls that have to do with training and maintenance of equipment. Um, and also, uh, Duncan was sure to tell me that this is the 75th year Am I correct, Dave, Duncan? 70, 75th year of service that the Volunteer Fire Department has provided uh, this type of rescues, fires, you know, be it EMS or fires to, to the residents. Uh, pretty important group of guys. Um, it would almost be great. I'd, I'd love to have them all in here one night so everybody could g just give them a public hand. But uh, they're not looking for that. But I just want everybody to be aware of, of what they do. Uh, I think that's it, isn't it, Chief? All right, thank you. That's it. Thanks, Tom. Uh, let's see, Township Attorney, uh, Mr. Sorty.
2017 and looked at the prosecutions that we performed for the township. We've looked at a couple different issues on what can, might be more efficient, uh, ways that we might be able to make, that I might be able to recommend to you modifications of our ordinances that might allow us to, to operate on a more efficient basis. Put it simply, we've got a couple situations where we need a lesser charge so that if we choose to drop a charge down for purposes of a plea bargain we can include that I've got a draft ordinance that I will bring to you at the at the to that and there are some changes for instance the uh, um, minor in possession um, ordinance has er, state law has changed mm -hmm. and I'm going to recommend that we change that as well our, our local ordinance so that we can charge under our local ordinance as well I've gone through a couple of the other ones. If any of you had anything, have any questions, I know you guys were working on some of the ordinances, let me know. I plan on bringing those to you if, you know, it, over the course of the next few meetings, those matter. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Surdy. Uh, manager? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I have a few brief items. Um, one, um, this Thursday, February 15th, the Parkway Bridge will be closed for inspection um, as scheduled, and again, March 15th, it's also scheduled. Um, Supervisor Loftus will give you some update on some uh, um, additional bridge information. And uh, Ted Fournier and I hounded Comcast and the Comcast Government Affairs Rep. They sent an army of techs out to Township Hall, checked transfer stations, their departments, softwares, computer equipment, in the sound that you have now, I hope it was good earlier today, <laughs> um, has been fixed. Um, unfortunately, they haven't been able to explain to us what they did to fix it. Um, the best explanation is the computers when they make one thing adjust, it changes something else, so they're constantly backtracking it. So um, myself and Ted Fournier have to make it, um, well, made it clear that we will make this a priority with Comcast, and they are, um, they understand we're very serious about it because um, we, we felt that it was to the point where if we just needed to discontinue broadcast because of that poor projection, we would do so. Um, I think they, they value uh, this level of community television and, and, and hopefully that support will continue. So the good news is it took long enough and we, we were very, very sad about that. And um, one comment I'd like to make about the recent snow emergency when, when I had a couple inquiries. Oh my goodness, a snow emergency, what does it mean? What does it mean? Well, what it means is no parking on the streets and that police and fire believe that there's issues with emergency response. So we then will call out township staff and township contractors to clear the roads um, in the subdivisions. Wayne County is still the primary road agency. They're in charge of all the main roads. And um, with the subdivision streets based on the snow that we re received, Chances are they probably would make it around to the subdivisions at the end of this week. Actually, they uh, they were in the subdivisions this week. Really? Well, that's news to me. So, um, obviously, we had received quite a bit of snow over that period of time, but it was to the point where um, we were concerned about emergency response. So that's what triggers a snow emergency. And I also understand a few residents were upset because we plowed the end of their driveways in. Uh, unfortunate occurrence. Uh, and, I, and will not stop and clear everyone's driveway. It's, uh, the roads, we made the roads passable for safety reasons. That, nothing else, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Riem, Township Manager. Hey, did you cover the mother-son bowling? You did, okay. All right, so we're I'm good. 
Okay, so let's see, nuts and bolts. Uh, President's Day is February 19th. Township Hall will be closed. That day will be open the next morning. Um, Mother Son Bowling, Wheeler Fest, outside covered, St. Patrick's Luncheon. That is at Centennial Farm on Wednesday, March 14th. Um, we will have another board meeting before then, about 12.30 p.m. Cost is $10. Good to get a reservation in advance so they know how much, you know, they're going to have to cater for. Uh, Dale briefed us on the bridge. There was some bad information out that, that led people to believe that the bridge is going to be closed from February 4, 15th to March 15th. That is incorrect. It will be Feb February 15th and March 15th, which will lead me into... Pardon? Not from 9 till 3. Uh, a couple times they have opened it up early when they finish their inspection, but that's plan, plan on that and sh keep checking the app for updates to that. Okay, speaking of bridges, um, Friday morning, the snottiest day we've had this year, of course, is when uh, the Down River Community Conference and the Conference of Western Wayne had scheduled a joint meeting out in Romulus, and it's my job to be there. So it was a long drive out this morning. The good part was hardly anybody was driving. The bad part was is it was just a miserable driving. But once there, it was well attended. We had uh, a lot of the Wayne County uh, staff, our chief executive, uh, County Executive Warren Evans was there, mu much of his DPS staff. A lot of the state reps were there, other mayors and supervisors. And some of the topics of discussion were snow emergencies. Uh, during the meeting, uh, I got several calls from Chief Murdoch. He'd been, uh, you know, checking with uh, he and Por Chief Porcelain would be going back and forth. How bad is it? What do we do? I, I heard other mayors on the, with the same thing on their phones. Time for a snow emergency. Uh, Chief Murdoch asked if it was time to uh, declare it, and we agreed it was time. The responsibility eventually falls on me, but it was time. And uh, we launched the uh, road, the plowing shortly thereafter, and we kept the community up and running. But uh, other, other topics, again, between myself and some of the other uh, mayors and supervisors were revisiting the Headley Amendment, which we all agree is choking the lives out of our communities financing-wise, and uh, what's going on on the veterans exemption, which uh, there is legislation in the state right now that would shift that to the state it would come off of uh, income taxes rather than property taxes. We had no mechanism to recover that uh, those funds. It was about fifty thousand dollars it cost us through just a stroke of the well, not a stroke. It was the legislature's pen, but they're going to shift that burden over to, on the income tax of the state side rather than taking it out of the communities. So I expect we'll have those uh, resources next year for our budget. I'm hoping which will make up for the re further reductions in the state shared revenue, which is not going to be pretty. But uh, my biggest conversation was uh, with Mr. Mike Gorman, who is the Wayne County Bridge Engineer. He's been here twice to uh, at, our, at our meetings with the county, but I had so, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with him, and uh, he expects, I'll just tell you what, what, what we discussed, he expects the inspection report to be completed at the end of March. So the last inspection, March 15th, they should have the inspection report completed. From there, they can, uh, with the inspection report, they can go out for requests for proposals. It's going to be on a design-build basis. Uh, the county is not going to tell contractors how to do their job. The contractors are going to give their best estimates on what's best for the bridge to get it back to full serviceability, uh, timetables, costs, and and. Uh, so still the plan is to repair the piers first, but uh, his confidence was a little bit less than last time. The methodology, he still hopes we can do it from below so we won't have, it won't generate a closure for the pier repairs, but that'll depend on what the contractors recommend, what looks like the most feasible method to get those piers stabilized to keep our bridge uh, functional. And uh, any further closings of the bridge will be based on the contractor's proposals. Once the piers are stabilized, then when you get up to the, the actual metal structure, what's going to happen up there, when it's going to happen, how that can be replaced and repaired. So all this, this is a, you know, a, de a developing story. You're going to find out what I know when I know it. I know we all basically rely on that bridge. I still recommend getting a bridge pass for the toll bridge. Uh, you'll be glad you did. But other than that, there's still no prediction of any long-term closures, but that could change. Okay, funding sources, uh, Mrs. Dingle's uh, local aide, a guy named Mike Cox, Cotts, was at the meeting also. I managed to corner him and make sure we were on the same page that 
she knows we're going to need funding for this bridge. She's going to be working on it at the federal end. Uh, we're working on it on the state side. Uh, uh, Mr. Camilleri, our state rep, is aware of it. We're working on it locally with the county. And uh, we'll, we're just going to do the best we can with what we get to work with. But we are all dedicated to getting that bridge up to uh, full service ability and getting it up as soon as possible. So that was the highlight of my day. The drive back was even longer than the drive out there. Rear wheel drive cars do not like to climb the uh, West Road Bridge car <laughs> in, in, in ankle deep slush. But it was exciting. Glad I was there. It was, it was time well spent. I learned a lot and I reminded a few people uh, we're still here and we're still going to stay in contact. So the, the state uh, the legislation, state would reimburse locals for losses due to disabled veterans property tax exemption. Again, it's not to eliminate the exemption. It's just going to shift the cost from communities who could least afford it to the state who can apportion it uh, appropriately, probably out of the income taxes. So it's uh, House Bill 4362. Uh, you can contact Dar Darren Camilleri. Let him know you want that legislation to go forward, shift it to the state, let us collect that revenue back and keep our township running. And I know. So with that, over to. Uh, I'm glad I've got people looking after me every, all the time. We'll turn it back to Mr. Malvesto because there's it, Lent is coming soon. Mr. Malvesto. Correct. Lent is coming soon. Uh, starting this Friday, the uh, Knights of Columbus, Grosse Isle Knights of Columbus out of, the, out of the Sacred Heart Church, are starting their fish dinners. Uh, the dinners will start being served at four o'clock. They have a huge menu, and they try to uh, change it up every week. Uh, there's always some entertainment to be had uh, in the dining area. Uh, please, if you, uh, if you so will, um, support them. Come on over and get a fish dinner. If you like your dinner, feel free to just stand in front of the opening and wave at me and give me the thumbs up. If there's a problem with your dinner, I would suggest you talk to somebody else. <laughs> but uh, it'll be running. It'll be it'll be running for seven consecutive weeks until Easter. So uh, Fridays, starting four o'clock, Sacred Heart Church. They're awesome dinners. They really are. They a lot of a lot of good people put in a lot of hard hard work, long time, long hours. Uh, from the little ones who bust the tables uh, and don't walk away to get yourself a soft drink. And expect your, your your plate to be there when you when you come back because they're so efficient they'll actually take your plate away before you finish. But please uh, support them if you will. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Melvesto. All right, with that we'll move on to public comment uh, tonight. Members of the public present. All right, Mr. Clark, don't let us down. Mr. Ream, Woody Clark, Park Lane, legal fees. Glad you asked because I took the time to add them up. So we have Pepper Hamilton, that's the MDEQ in Great Lakes Water, total of $4,573.25. We've got the Daigle Law Firm, which is finalizing policies and procedures for our police department for $4,560. And uh, Cot Sangster, which is working on a labor attorney with our police contract for $5,940, a total of $15,073.25. Talk to somebody on, on West River Road, north of Church Road. He wants to know if he you, he can take a survey. If they if you people will put one way street in. Please have him come to the DPS meeting tomorrow night. Please have him come to the DPS. Uh, I don't meeting. see him till weekend, so you know. But anyway, he wants to know if you people will vote for it if they take the consensus and say they pass it of the people who live there. Woody, I would say we we will certainly consider it. It's something that's been talked about previously. Uh, so if, yes, that I mean, we'll, we'll take that into consideration. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to speak for I the commission. I understand that, but they have to take the vote first, and then right. they have to decide if they're going to go north or south. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that. I don't live up there. If I they, just, whatever I, they do, I was told I was come up here and yep, say something. Whatever they do, uh, pass it on to us, and uh, we definitely will consider it. <clears throat> okay, here's something else on this, out on the street. Uh, to vote 
in Mexico, every eligible Mexican citizen has a tamper-proof photo ID card with a thumbprint and an embossed hologram. All citizens are required personally to enroll and show proof of birth of citizenship. Applicants are required to personally return and collect their voting credentials. So how is it that we can't upgrade it to a Mexican standard without being called racist? Maybe it's because our one political party is dependent on voter fraud. Okay, a little more things here. There's, uh, there was, uh, Ruba, driver, and a NFL linebacker were killed. And uh, sadly, both Jackson and the Uber driver, Jeff Burrow, were killed on Sunday that were struck by a truck, drunk driver on Interstate 70 in Indiana. The pair were reportedly stranded on an emergency shoulder of the highway when Manuel Sabala, drunk as a skunk, came barreling down the street and hit him. He fled the scene. He was later arrested and booked which time it was apparent that he did not only an American illegally, he has been deported three times, twice. Driving without a license. Drunk, illegally, driving without a license. That's all I got. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Lemoyne. Good evening, uh, Steve Lemoyne Hampton. A uh, couple quick points. Um, first, I had the opportunity and the, the pleasure to see my fifth grader at the D.A.R.E. graduation. So uh, thank you, very good program. Um, hopefully he sticks with it. Uh, tough choice to be made out there, so thank you for your time. Uh, second, daddy-daughter dance. We need a larger venue. Uh, I have very few years left with my youngest to attend this, so hopefully there can be a larger venue. It was absolutely packed and it's always a good time. So. Uh, down to the last kid to take to that. And then third, so again on public record, Trustee Budney, Church Road, that's the priority. I'll say it every time. So we'll mention that I can't make it everybody night. knows it. I have another work meeting and then basketball for my son, but um, Church Road. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Lemoyne. Other public comment? Vega. I live on Lafayette Drive. Um, I just have a couple questions. I'm a relatively new resident, um, and this is the first time I've had a chance to come to a meeting. Um, thank you. Um, uh, the snow removal was awesome. I thought that that was a great job. I live on a dead end. My street has never, ever been plowed once, once since I've been here in two years. Um, so I don't have a problem with that. My question is, what, how much did that cost? And what is the long-term plan if that's going to have to be instituted again and again? And also, and I genuinely don't know the answer to this, what pressure is put on Wayne County to do the job that we all pay a lot of taxes for? I, I mean, if, I, I've never lived, I've lived in a city prior to this, and the city took care of plowing, and our city taxes went for that. I've never lived in a township. I don't know how it works. Does Brownstown Township suffer the same bad treatment by Wayne County? What can we do about it? What sort of public pressure can we put on them? Um, and what can we as citizens do? Is there a number that could be put out through the app to complain? I mean, if, if they get 10,000 calls... I'll try to answer all your questions okay. with one long paragraph. In the state of Michigan, townships... Road maintenance funding to townships come through the counties. Now, none of your none of your direct taxes go to roads right now. The, the transportation improvement program starts at the federal government, comes through the state with all the various taxes. Divided, and I used to know the ratios, but it's divided between the state, cities, and counties. The counties, due to the remnants of the McNitt Act, Act you'll hear it referred to sometimes as Act 51, Public Act 51 in 1951, took road funding away from townships and moved it up to the counties that the, you know, 
makes sense. There's 1,240 townships in Michigan. Each township had its own road standards. You know, every six miles, you wouldn't know what you'd be getting into. So in the big picture, most townships are very happy with that arrangement. Some townships only have 200 people living in them. Larger townships, Canton, for example, uh, right now being a new, and I'm going to get a little political here, Canton Township being fairly new infrastructure, their roads aren't falling apart yet. They're, I mean, not, Ford Road is a state road, but their residential roads are all fairly new. So they're not getting the same problems we have. They have a bigger tax. But in our case, being a more rural township, county gets to us eventually. And they're out plowing. They got some streets today, and, and Bernard says he's going to get the rest of them tomorrow. I got the news on this at uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon, Dale. So, I did see a couple of county trucks. So they are following up after what our guys did. The total cost of our plowing, I don't know. It was, we'll, we'll, get, the, we'll get the results on that, and what, we, what Compo bills us, what I have to pay in overtime for our DPS guys. And the, the intent of that was for emergency services. So we can house. Uh, your convenience just came as an ancillary result of that. So I have no objection to the, the call. I think it was a good call, but I'm just wondering long term how, how will that decision be reached and how will the funding... So we decide unless the laws of the state of Michigan change, and they're not likely to, um, our options are to become a city, in which case we'd get our own road funding. But we have 14 bridges internally in the island that would become ours. And a bridge repair somewhere between a half million to two million each. That's a, that's a big burden to bear. And that's based on what I got, the information I got from Gibraltar when they took over their roads. Um, what it costs, we make the decision based on safety. So rather than, if we didn't do it, you'd be a couple of days, like Monday. So Friday was the snowstorm, county was here Monday. Not bad. Normally we're a little bit later on that. Uh, to change that, we become a city, or they change the state law. State law is not going to, I ask that regularly, and the response is, the other, uh, probably 1,100 of the, of the 1,240 townships are very happy with the situation right now. No legislation, there's no impetus to change that. So we can either collect our own road millage, which we did have for a while, um, we can lay out some overtime dollars for emergency clearing and wait for the county. Did I answer most of your most of your questions? Was that the long answer you didn't? Yeah, want? Yeah, no, that you had, you'd answered a lot of my questions. I'm like a person who likes to take action when there's a problem. So if there's something, if if Wayne County started getting ten thousand calls from Grozill residents about not being able to get out of their driveways and plows, maybe they would send crews a little quicker. I don't know. The squeaky wheel gets the yeah. grease. I can't tell you not to. Well, I, it's just a thought. Um, Ms. Vega, if I, if I may add yes. something that Brian had to say. Uh, the county literally is responsible for thousands of miles of roads in I, Wayne County. I worked for the Wayne County Road Commission. We have 145 miles approximately on this street. And we did um, recently and annually uh, enter into an agreement for priority plowing on Grozeal. That has been very, very successful. This snow, I've lived here all of my 60 years. Um, this snow was an aberrant event. Um, as Mr. LeMoyne likes to remind us, it's a balancing act. Uh, do we put plows in every township vehicle? I think that the response was very good. Certainly, Chief Murdoch, your people were able to make four calls on Saturday and four calls on Sunday, if I'm remembering the numbers correctly. Um, we really do work hard at that. Um, if you want to call Wayne County, God bless you. I don't think that can hurt. But I do, I do know if you have any suggestions as to what we can do differently, you're going to have seven people on this side of the table that will listen to you. Oh, well, I'm, I like to listen, so I want to hear what you say first. Please let us know. Let us know if there's something we can do better. And and, and I, I just add to that, you know, part of the problem is it's like every every place else, it's money. If Wayne County had more money, they could have more people, they could have more trucks, they could get to it. So you it's it's a very difficult situation. Uh, as Carl said our uh, our priority uh, uh, plowing uh, has worked out well for us. 
far as us doing it, it's only going to be. Option. This is probably not a good option, but uh, you know there are significant numbers of private. Your new hearing aid. Okay. Not loud in this room. Sorry, Jim. Another idea might be, and I don't advocate this, but uh, hire a private contractor, and if there's ten houses on your street, divide. So you know, it's it's you know, not really okay. an option. I mean, it's it's dead end, so okay. we can ignore it. I just throw it out there as a possibility if it's if it works. Thanks. Well, if, if it bad enough, I guess that would be an option. Okay. Um, and okay, so my second and um, on the fire department, I just wanted to say um, I did not know that it was 75 years. I think that's absolutely fantastic. I think a public thank you would be fantastic to ha to organize something maybe at Island Fest, a banner, something to thank them, even. If people that want the thanks, I think it's an outstanding record and outstanding information to have. Um, okay, my last item, and this is uh, just a question, and it probably has maybe way too long of an answer for tonight, but um, the shortage in the budget every year, $200,000 from what I'm hearing, uh, what, are, what is the plan to address that? And what is the, um, oh, there's all sorts of rumors, you know, they might be selling open space, you know, I, I hope that's not true. Um, but what is the process and the procedure to address First that? First of all, I can't, I, I'll just, I'll, I'll make it easy on you. I can't address all the rumors. I mean, there's 10,300 no, people here, there's probably yeah. 10,000 rumors. Um, it's, our budget is getting much closer to being non-existent because and bless her heart. I mean, I love, I our, love our deficit, not our budget. Not our, our, budget. No, our budget is our budget is what our budget. Is. Thank you. But uh, the deficit is uh, as we're actually getting the receipts and the results in. It's not going to be anywhere near that. And again, I answer is I, I budget conservatively. The term I use is pessimistic, but. It always sounds worse. Well, it doesn't always, but nine times out of ten, we end up much better than she progresses. So this countdown to zero isn't going to happen. Not going to go bankrupt. We're not selling open space. We have some options. We're uh, starting our budget negotiations. Not negotiations. Discussions for next. Well, there will be next negotiations <laughs> next for, for next yep. year. And uh, I'm confident we're going to have a balanced budget next year. And I don't know how this year is going to turn out, but it's going to be much closer to balanced. What is the budget process? Like, how does that work? You guys? We don't have, we don't have enough time for that. Okay. But, you know, but does, is it public meetings? Do you yes. do public meetings on them? It will end up, we start out internally, and then we have public meetings shortly thereafter. Okay, excellent. But there's, it's, it's a public process, so there really ends up with no secrets. Okay, excellent. And just my personal vote. Hey, come to vote, more meetings. My personal vote, don't raise the taxes. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Come to more meetings. I will. Other problem, Chief. I just want to point out that while we were looking at the snow, Chief Porcelli really was out doing road patrol, giving Chief Murdoch the roads. This road's bad. This is awful. I can't get in here. Do something. I have to say, Joe and I have a great working relationship, so we bounce things off each other before we actually call you and and make decisions. But that being said, the reason I'm up here is I did get some emails from residents uh, referencing fire hydrants, and I want you to know the DPS is out clearing those hydrants. They got two guys on it. But that being said, if you, if you have a hydrant out in front of your house, please take time to clear that away so we can find it when we when we need it. So uh, House you saved by be your own. Yeah, I cleared the one out in front of my house, but it's very, very important that the residents take some responsibility just in case it's buried already and we drive by it. So just to let you know, fire hydrants are 500 feet apart in residential areas and they're 250 feet apart in commercial areas. If you can help us out with that, that would be very much appreciated. So. Other comments? Mr. Heil. Basic, yeah. I, where is the button? I got the English side of my height. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 
basically I've talked with uh, Greg, I've talked with Craig today. Can't send enough commendations to the way you made that choice to handle this emergency. Right, but I mean, I, we, I'm basically here to say that. I, I think that, that anyone who deals with this needs to understand that the county has a certain amount of equipment and an optimum level is not designed to take care of the really great emergency that comes up once every four years or, or whatever time that it is. Uh, people's experience, I, I lived on uh, Jewel Court for a while. Uh, one block long dirt road. And in fact, the county did plow that street. But if the snowstorm was heavy on a Saturday, we didn't see them until maybe the following Wednesday or Thursday. And, and sometimes not at all because by then the snow was gone. But I think Wayne County has done a good job and, and, and would like to add that to the remarks. There were two men outside my house on Christmas morning at 8.30 taking care of the road. It stopped in front of my place. I was out clearing my driveway. But uh, I just wanted to commend you for that. It's always good to have extra money in the sock to have a good cash cushion for unexpected expenses. And this is an example of that. You could maybe put a line item in it for a certain amount just in case. That might be wise planning too. But uh, I was here basically to say thank you. You did a good job. Thank you, Mr. Heil. Oh, I'm getting nervous. Okay. Any other comments from the public? All right, with none offered, uh, this time we're... Motion to uh, retire to closed session. Second. Buddy, seconded by Trustee Bletcher. Um, nothing that requires a roll call, so... Oh, I'm sorry, at, at uh, 8.33, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We are in closed session. We'll meet in the, in the conference room in, let's make it soon. Doesn't matter what time I say they show up.